Hey Internet, I'm Hector Navarro, and hold on to your butts, because on this week's episode, we're talking about more than just one episode of DCTV. First up, tonight, on Monday night, on an all-new iZombie, your favorite rom-com zom-drom is back for season four, and tonight's episode is a doozy. All right, so here's what's going down. Liv is investigating the murder of a massive Seattle Seahawks fan. All right, Seahawks, the Legion of Boom, Seattle. <laughs> so things may get a little extreme in terms of fandom. Liv might take it a little bit too far. I think us comic book people can kind of relate to that, uh, if I'm being honest. Plus, we get a guest star in Ptolemy Slocum. Actor Ptolemy Slocum, you may know him from Westworld and from Preacher and from the LA comedy scene. Ptolemy plays a massive Niners fan who hates the Hawks. So you know he's gonna be suspect numero uno, but trying to kill a Seattle fan. Come on, Ptolemy. Hope it wasn't you, man. You better watch out. You better watch out. Meanwhile, Ravi is still holding a torch for Peyton. Ooh, speaking of Ravi, I am so excited to announce this. You guys, you guys, after four seasons, Raul Kohli, who plays Ravi, will tonight finally be naked. That's right, looking good, Raul. Mm. He's been hitting the gym as well as them game controllers. Dang, son. Woo, looking tight, looking swole, looking mighty fine. Raul, if I keep going, it'll be inappropriate. So keep up the good work, and you're making me want to have to go hit the gym, bud. I'm gonna, I'm really gonna have to try to catch up. <laughs> All right, guys, so iZombie was crazy last season. It promises to be just as crazy this season, and the proof is in this pudding. I had the pleasure of sitting down with the star of iZombie herself, Rose McIver. Check it out. Rose, remind us where we left off at the end of season three. So at the end of season three, there has been an illusion flu outbreak. Um, in fact, uh, Fillmore Graves has been infecting um, humans with the zombie virus. And so now the zombieism is public. We're going into season four with um, a very different sort of context for everything. It's no longer this hidden zombie secrecy that Liv's been dealing with. It's now very much a condition that is known about and, and that the rest of the United States is certainly not very excited to have going on. So starting imagine. season four, we, we are in a walled city. We're in a very different climate. Um, it's also, we're facing brain shortages. We're facing all sorts of things that happen within a walled city where yeah. trade embargo, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Speaking of, let's talk about the wall for a second because I feel like this is a good like, hot button issue. How does Liv feel about the wall that was built? L Liv is very interested in, um, in, the idea, in like the idea of integration and making sure that we all actually are looking out for one of another. The United States isn't quite so interested in that. They're very threatened by the zombie population, <laughs> understandably. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, she comes up against that a lot. Rose? Mm. What's going on with Ravi? Why is he naked so much in the premiere? Not that I'm complaining, mind you. Ravi is naked so much in the premiere because Raul Kohli uh, has been working with a personal trainer <laughs> for the last year. And he basically filled up Rob Thomas's email inbox being like, come on, let's get this going. I'm ready. I'm ready for my shirtless scene. So um, they thought they'd utilize that. And all I can say is that it is done in a very funny way, in a way that absolutely honors Ravi as a character. Great. Um, it's something that fans will, will make a lot of memes out of. I would mm -hmm. say that. <laughs> Rose, what type of brains is Liv going to eat this season? This season we get we get a great variety. Um, I thought they'd run out of brain options, but yeah. turns out they can just keep finding them. Um, <laughs> we have a Ren Fair brain, which is a lot oh, of fun. Oh, fun! I geeked out about that. Like, okay. it was pretty cool and. Um, very knight in shining armor. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a musical theater brain. Oh boy. Uh, which is really exciting. One, another one that was in there is um, a New Zealand accent and I get oh. to do that this season, oh, which great. is pretty cool, yeah. I think you I think you might be pretty good at that. I, I don't know, it took a lot of training. <laughs> Rose is the best. She's so nice, she's so lovely. So guys, be sure to watch iZombie tonight on Monday night. I believe I've arrived at a cause of death. Ground up in a giant mixing bowl. No, wait a minute. Let me recheck my work. Yeah, ground to death in a mixing bowl. Ms. Perales, how long have you been working across from Mr. Eggs? Uh, ever since the plant opened. Right after the world got turned upside down. So what's that, uh, three months? Uh, nearly four. You know, anyone who might have wanted to kill him. Well, he wasn't real keen on zombies. For any particular reason. The thing you gotta know is that he's the biggest Seahawks fan you've ever met. I've met a lot of crazy Seahawks fans. They mean they hated zombies. Yeah, but before everyone got turned into zombies, Clint had his dream job at CenturyLink Field. 
and then boom, we're zombie town. After that, instead of a job he loved, he's packaging human brains by day, cleaning them out of the grinders by night. He's always complaining about zombies. Sometimes a little too loud. I mean, the Fillmore Graves guys here aren't the warmest dudes. Oh my God, I am, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean like, Warmest? I just meant like. No, of course I, I'm fine. I just meant they weren't. They're not friendly. This new world's gonna take some getting used to. Why well, bother? Someone's probably going to nuke us any day now. And tomorrow night on Tuesday on an all new The Flash, Barry Allen meets a very powerful woman whose abilities may help in the fight against Devoe. And meanwhile, Ralph Dibney learns that Devoe is targeting everyone who was on the bus for some reason. And you know what? He doesn't want any part of it. He doesn't want to be a hero anymore. He just wants to stay alive, Ralph. That's all he cares about, is staying alive, okay? He doesn't want to have to worry about all that other stuff. Meanwhile, who is this mystery woman? She's a character named Izzy Bowen. Yes, and if you're a massive comic book Flash fan, you may know what this character is based off of. Yes, the classic Flash villain, the Fiddler, in the comic books was named Isaac Bowen, and the show is Izzy Bowen. But I want to give you guys a comic book connection to go check out the old school, the original Fiddler, and all of his Silver Age glory. I'm talking about checking out this issue online. It is called The Flash, Volume 1, issue number 123, Flash of Two Worlds. Yes, you know the cover. You've seen it already recreated in the show itself. It's that girder that's falling on that helpless victim that's saying, Flash, save me. And then you've got Barry Allen Flash coming in from the side and Jay Garrick Flash coming in from the other side. And they're both saying, I'm coming right at the same time. And then they're about to go save this person. You know the cover. Now I get to tell you whose fault is it that that iconic girder is falling on that helpless victim? Why, it's none other than the Fiddler, baby. That's right, Isaac Bowen in this comic book storyline is teaming up with Golden Age Flash villains The Shade and The Thinker. So there's another TV show connection right there for you. In this classic storyline, Barry Allen pops over to Earth 2 for the very first time accidentally after he was shown off to a theater full of kids doing a show for Iris, and he just accidentally pops over into Earth 2, realizes that this place is the real life home of his comic book hero, Jay Garrick the Flash, the Golden Age Flash. So they team up and they whoop some butt. So guys, be sure to check out volume one, issue number 123, it's easy to remember, one, two, three. And if you wanna get it in the collected edition, look no further than this beautiful new collection that just recently came out, The Flash, The Silver Age, volume two. I also highly recommend Volume 1. They're awesome collections. They're so, so great. So be sure to check that out. Throw on that awesome The Flash TV show score by Blake Neely. Get your heart racing. Get your heart pumping. And do not miss tomorrow night's brand new episode of The Flash. The Fiddler. <laughs> And later this week on Thursday night, TikTok, watch out, Doc. It's the spring premiere of Gotham. Yeah, Gordon gets called to the scene after the toy maker is hired to assassinate one of Gotham's doctors. Plus, Alfred Pennyworth's new life in the Narrows is starting to become a little bit complicated. And Ivy reveals her new persona to her friend, Selena Kyle. Speaking of Ivy, if we're talking about the rebirth of Poison Ivy, then I cannot wait to give you guys this comic book connection. Go look for Poison Ivy, Cycle of Life and Death. In this storyline, Dr. Pamela Isley gets a new job as a researcher at the Gotham Botanical Gardens. And it makes sense. I mean, she's one of the leading experts in the world of plants in the science world. So this is this is pretty great. You know, she's, she's, she's maybe trying not to be a supervillain anymore. She's trying to turn over a new leaf. Maybe? <laughs> I'm sorry, forgive me, I had to do it. Plant-based puns are the healthiest of puns. Anyway, Poison Ivy has got this job, and as it always happens in Gotham City, her fellow scientists start turning up dead. So of course she's suspect numero uno. We got a lot of suspects tonight, but she may also be the only person who can solve this case. Now you've got guest stars galore. You've got Swamp Thing, he's a plant guy. You've got Catwoman, everybody loves Catwoman, and everyone's favorite gal pal, Harley Quinn, shows up. Yeah, just real quick, if we've got time for this, I'm gonna paint a little scene for you guys. In the very first issue of this six issue miniseries, Harley Quinn comes to collect Pamela from work, and after work they go to a seedy bar because she's trying to figure out, you know, Pamela, what are you doing? You're supposed to be a villain like me, I'm Harley Quinn, let's go have fun, but she really is trying to be a good person now. When, of course, this happens in every dive bar in Gotham, a gang of bikers start harassing a woman. So Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn kick these guys' asses, and it's awesome. And Poison Ivy even tries out her new pheromone recipe. 
with some pretty hilarious results. This is pretty great. Um, you know, I think it's great. It's nonviolent means. You know, that's what the world needs more of is love, sweet love. So guys, be sure to check out Poison Ivy, Cycle of Life and Death. And speaking of Selena Kyle, we've got Gotham's own Cameron B. Condova here to talk to us about the spring premiere. So take it away, Cameron. We see Selena partnered with Barbara and Tabitha. So they finally opened their club and they're having a party to celebrate as criminals do. <laughs> and um, Selena finds out that Bruce is there and it's the weirdest thing. Why is Bruce in the club with delinquents and... Wait, 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 Bruce Wayne? Yes, Bruce Wayne. What is Bruce Wayne. doing there? I don't know and neither does Selena and I'm assuming Alfred doesn't know either. Uh -oh. So there's a little there. We gotta address the elephant in the room. Where do things stand with Selena and Bruce right now? What's going on? All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sick of that question yet? <laughs> um, it's just like, they're always in a bad place. They're never in a good place. Yeah. Um, and it's all because of miscommunication and misunderstanding. It's literally, I mean, you see it in the show. Mm -hmm. The audience, Selena will obviously be trying to help Bruce and the audience is like, yeah, Bruce, she, you know, she's trying to help you here. And he's like, no. Go away, Selena. I don't need your shenanigans right now. <laughs> he He's just being not himself, and that really annoys Selena because she knows that he is damaged and he is hurting on the inside, and she knows that that's not the way to deal with things. Cameron, where is Selena headed in the back half of the season? You see her actually struggling between sides, and she's always, we've seen her always do that. Yeah. But now it's not, to me, it's always been with herself. It's always been fighting the two sides and the two opposites with herself. Mm -hmm. But in the second half of the season, you actually see her literally from other people being tossed to each and either side. And it's, I feel like it'll be frustrating to watch because it can come off that she's just indecisive, but it's actually her literally being thrown at two sides of the right and the wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what you'll see with her this season. We're shooting episode 20 right now, so I still have yet to see where she'll be at the very end of the season. Okay, okay. But I'm really excited. Nice, that was awesome. Cameron, thank you so much. You guys, do not miss the brand new episode of Gotham happening Thursday night. And it's time for everybody's favorite segment of any YouTube video in the entire universe. Questions and answers, that's the name of it. Ba -da -ba 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 -da. Questions and answers. Last week I asked you guys, who from the Legends of Tomorrow cast would you wanna be stuck in a time loop with? And y'all delivered, here we go. Jordan Valdez, what's up Jordan? He says, if I were stuck in a time loop, I don't wanna be stuck with Heat Wave, because at least he'd probably be cracking me up over and over again, and then laughing, crying emoji. It's <laughs> a good one, Jordan, really good. Brennan Hatton says, I would be stuck with the Atom, because he would find a way out of the situation. That's smart. That's really smart. Ray's a good dude. Zach L says, this is the best channel. Thank you, Zach. Yes, I read it because sometimes it feels good to read good things from the internet. It's nice. Let's try to be nice to each other. Shannon Wu says, I think I'd like to be stuck in a time loop with Sarah, cause she's Sarah. I don't need another reason. All right, that was intense. <laughs> Maybe I added that emphasis on there. Marcus Garrett, he's not even picking a member of the Legends, but he's going with this. I'd be stuck with Cisco and Curtis because they're the funniest and biggest brain ever. That's true, they're very funny and they're very big brained. All right. Osman Elmobaric says, I would like to be in a time loop with Zari so we could just play video games until the loop gets fixed. But you gotta put some work into it, dude. You have to be the one to go and you gotta make the change. You know? If you wanna be that, you wanna see the change, you gotta make the change. Michael Jackson. I'm looking at, my, I'm looking at, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Make a change. Lego Batman, all right. Extreme Gamer Dude 435 says, if I was stuck in a time loop, I would want to be stuck with Nate because let's be honest, he is the best. Also, where can I get that awesome Firestorm shirt? <laughs> this Joker one's pretty cool too. Enda Mechnabola says, Kid Flash, and then they're out of there. That's it, that's all they said, Kid Flash. Enough said. Michael Alton says, the sexiest member. You know who I'm talking about. Michael, I'm not on this show, you can't pick me. <laughs> I'm not on the Legends of Tomorrow, I'm not. <laughs> you have to pick one of those characters, Michael. <laughs> I'm blushing. And this brings us to our brand new question of the week. Now this week on The Flash, we met the Fiddler, right? And she's pretty good with the violin. So my question to you guys, if you were to form a band, 
which characters from any DC TV show would be in the band and what instrument would they play? All right, I'm gonna give you your first one. I'd probably pick Solomon Grundy from Gotham on drums. You know what I'm saying? Poof, 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 poof. And we'd have a hit song, Born on a Monday. Oh! <laughs> so guys, go ahead and let us know your dream bands down below with all of your favorite DC characters, and we'll probably read them on the show next week. All right, y'all, that's it for me this week, but don't forget to check out new episodes of Lucifer, Legends of Tomorrow, and Arrow this week to get your DC TV needs fulfilled. And once you do that, be sure to head over to DCComics.com to check out those sweet, sweet recaps from our friends at the hashtag DCTV Couch Club. We'll see you guys next time. Bye bye